If you're like me, you're always looking to improve your studio and I needed lighting. So I went ahead and started searching on Amazon, looking on YouTube, looking at the different options that were available where I could get a light with some uh, significant output to work in my studio, but something that didn't break the bank. After looking at a lot of different things, I did settle in on the uh, Viltrox we light Ninja 400. I'll just refer to it as the Ninja in this short video that I'm doing. But uh, with the Ninja, you know, it, it, it comes in at around $369 at the time of doing this video. So much cheaper than something like the Aperture um, 120D Mark II, which this light compares to as far as capability, as far as output. And so you're saving several hundred dollars by going with the Ninja. And so um, with me having a budget, I went ahead and got the Ninja. Wanted to share with you some of the specs. So the Ninja is a, uh, has an output of 150 watts. It has 12,750 lumens of output. It is a bicolor light. So it goes from 2,500 Kelvin to 8,500 Kelvin. So you've got a nice range there. As you can see the setup here, you have the main controller box that it comes with where you can control the, the brightness, where you can control the um, Kelvin level. You can actually have multiple groups. I won't go into that. Um, you also have, as you can see here, a little wireless remote which I don't use as often. And you also have, which I have right here showing you my phone, this is the app. So let's briefly talk about the app controls compared to the main controller box. What I've found, and then I'll get into some other things, but what I've found is it is, it can be more difficult to control with, with fine detail, the color temperature and the uh, power outage uh, or the, the power, the, how much brightness, how low, how high with the app. It, it works flawlessly, but it's just awkward a little bit with your fingers. I do find myself enjoying the app more. However, let's talk about how you are able to power the light. And I'm going to actually turn off the light for a moment just so you can kind of see the difference. You can power that through an AC, comes with an AC adapter, or you can use a, a V-Lock battery. So you've got AC or DC power capabilities. It obviously doesn't come with any batteries, but it does come with the AC adapter. It comes with the reflector that you can see here. I'm going to go ahead and turn it back on for a moment. It comes with a reflector working off of a budget. I'm using what I have, if you will. So the reflector that, that comes with it is probably not appropriate unless it's a good distance away from you to be uh, pointed directly on you. So I typically have it bouncing off of the wall in front of me when I'm doing a live streaming or pre-recorded videos. I do plan on getting a softbox hopefully soon, but I think it's totally workable by bouncing it off of some uh, a wall, possibly a, a white board of some sort. You could have a DIY softbox, a lot of options, but there are plenty of softboxes out there as well on Amazon that you could order. I just don't have one yet. One of the other key elements to this is it does come with a standard Bowens mount. So again, those modifiers that you would be looking at, maybe modifiers that you already have, if, they're, if they have a standard Bowens mount, then you're good to go. So that, that's a big plus. As far as how it compares to other lights or what some of its competitors are, I'm not gonna get into the competing products with regards to their full capabilities, but I'd already mentioned the Aperture 120D Mark II, the uh, Godox 150. There are other lights that are cheaper that are bicolor, but they don't have as high an output. From what I understand doing my own research, the Ninja is certainly the uh, least expensive bicolor 150 watt type light out there on the market. Next closest thing I believe is the aperture and it's in the $700 range. So that gives you some indication of how much you're saving. 
The uh, light also has a CRI rating of 95 plus. So color accuracy is one thing that I'm not able to measure myself. I don't have the devices to measure that. I've seen different uh, reviews su suggesting that the color accuracy is for the most part good. What I, I have experienced myself consistently and others is at that lower end range and the high end range where it's using just one set of the LEDs or the other, you're certainly going to be able to get your daylight bright setting if that's what you're looking at or something you know, along the tungsten look. Talk about build quality for a moment. Build, build quality, I would say, is excellent. I've never owned an Aperture, for example, or a Godox, so I can't, I can't compare them side by side, but I'm very pleased, especially given the um, budget price range with regards to the construction. It's mostly metal construction. The body is metal. The uh, frame or the, the, um, the mount is metal. The only thing that's maybe plastic is the handle in the back. So very good construction. Another thing that a lot of people are concerned about when they're getting a light, especially if it's going to be fairly close to you or fairly close to your audio source, is the fan noise. My experience is, having used this now for a couple of weeks, is that the fan noise is okay. It's not loud enough that I've found it uh, basically being noticeable in the audio of my videos. So that's, that's the main thing. If I, don't, if I don't hear it in the videos, if other people are not hearing it in the videos, then I'm good to go. If I turn this to the side, you should be able to see there's a red uh, lever right here. So you can just pull that back and then you can very easily adjust the light as you can see there. So compared to a lot of other lights, that's certainly much easier. So I like the fact that we can do that and then we just we just flip it back again like this and then it's locked back in place and we're good to go. You can see here I've got a relatively inexpensive light stand. It's just a desktop light stand, works really good can put this on any number of other types of light stands. So this is what we're using. And also, as you can see, if I work here and do this, turn it, then you can see that I can take off the reflector. And now we can turn it on with the app and you can see what it looks like that way. Now, if I progress through the range of colors, I'm at 1%, by the way, uh, with regards to power. Many people have noticed, and certainly I've noticed as well, Not don't see this as necessarily a bad thing, but just something you should know. At the 1% mark, you're already uh, pretty bright, so just keep that in mind. That's zero, and then we're now at 8%, so I'm just gonna kind of progressively get brighter and brighter. So as you can see, it's, uh, quite bright. And from what I understand, again, although I don't have one myself, when compared to the Aperture 120D Mark II, uh, many think that this actually is a brighter light. So, you know, your ability to cover a bigger area is, is likely there compared to the Aperture, for example. One thing that, I, again, that I've mentioned is the app can be at times a little more difficult to use to adjust the lighting. So I'm going to leave that kind of down a little bit. Now I'll work my way down. I'm at 8,500 Kelvin right now and I can go down the range and you'll see it changing. It's, it's not as noticeable until you get again to the lower range or the higher range. So I'm at 2,500 right now and then now I'm going all the way back up to 8,500. I think most people have found that at 8,500 Kelvin, you're pretty close to the 5,600 Kelvin that you might see in a um, verified color, you know, single color daylight bright type light. So 
The good thing about having the range of 2,500 to 8,500 Kelvin is you're, uh, it's very likely that you're going to be able to, depending on your situation, depending on what kind of white balance you want, you're going to be able to dial it in to give you the look that you need. Again, especially, especially if you're on a budget but yet want a good light, then the, the Ninja 400, the Viltrox Ninja 400 is an excellent choice. There's no doubt that build quality, although doesn't compare to an Aperture 120D, for example, you're saving a significant amount, amount of money. And if you're not going to be you know, moving this around a ton, if it's not going to be experiencing a lot of um, moving around and taking on a lot of stress, then you know, I think this is an excellent choice and you know, I'm definitely happy with what I have. I've been using it, like I said now, for over two weeks. I, I use it all the time now to live stream. I will be getting a softbox, as I said, and I will do a follow-up video with the softbox where I can have it pointing directly at me. And um, I'm confident the results will be great. And uh, I'm just glad that I can take that you know, $300, $400 that I saved with this light and use it to, again, continue to improve my studio. There's plenty of other things that I need to get, want to get, but lighting was the next um, item on my list, and now I can check that off for the most part. This will now be my main key light. I do probably want to add a few other uh, lights, maybe a hair light, some other accent lights. I, I certainly have some RGB color RGB lights, uh, panel lights that, um, you know, in that sixty to hundred dollar range that have been nice to have. But you know, I think a lot of people try to use those, for example, as a key light, and they really just don't put out enough light. But with the Ninja Four Hundred, I've got that taken care of now. 